What is up guys, it is Steady Chaos. In today's video, I wanna talk about brightness in game optimizer mode specifically using HGIG. Now, in my previous video, I did a brightness test using Spears and Munsell and my Colorimeter X-Rite i1 Pro Plus to gauge brightness in filmmaker mode at one, two, five, 10, 25, and 100% windows and the C2 was quite a bit brighter than the C1 from one to 10%, especially in the 10% window, it was about 100 nits brighter. And it topped out around 720, 725 or so nits. So I figured, what is everybody really, really concerned about though? Yes, peak brightness in modes like standard cinema, filmmaker, that is definitely a concern for movie watching, Netflix, things like that. But a lot of people use their OLEDs, particularly for gaming. So I wanted to see what the brightness would be using Spears and Munsell once again with my X-Rite i1 Pro Plus color meter and HCFR calibration software. I don't suspect we'll have a huge change in overall brightness, but I wanted this to make this video just so that prospective gamers would know what they're getting into if they decide to purchase the LG C2, especially the 42 inch, which is what I have here. So we'll start off with a 1% window. Again, game optimizer. So we're pushing about 690 or so nits, 693, 600, yeah, 693 or so, and that's a 1% window. So not bad, not bad for a small 42 inch display. And then we go up to a 2% window. We're pushing 703 nits, going up a little bit, 705. And then we go ahead and hit the 5% window. And we're pushing 706, so not much of a departure, 708, 710. The interesting thing is, is when I put a window up, you would expect with an OLED that first burst of brightness to be the highest reading, but that's not always the case. I bring up the window and I get a reading of around say 710 for example, and then it slowly inches its way up to 711, 12, 13, and so on and so forth. I always expected with an OLED, you take a reading at say 720 and then slowly it would lose its brightness from there. That's usually what reviewers say but I find that my readings show the inverse of that. I hit a nit level and then it actually goes up a little bit from there. Not much, but a few nits, which is interesting. All right, so that's 5%. Now let's hit 10%. This is usually when the TV is at its brightest. 10% window fetches us right off the bat 719, going up to 721, 722, 723. 724, we're pretty much peaked out 725, 726. See what I mean, how it keeps kind of going up? 728, 729, 730. You gotta remember too that this TV, let's see how many hours I've put on this TV. I've had this TV for about three weeks now. So if we go down to support, is it support or is it under general? I think it's under general devices, TV management, TV information. 109 hours of total power on time. So that should be enough time for the TV to be somewhat broken in. Usually it's at least 100 hours, sometimes more like two or 300 hours before the TV really kind of settles in and then you extract the maximum brightness out of the panel. But at 109 hours until we're getting a pretty, pretty accurate and pretty close reading to what this TV will eventually be. So we're at, so it's kind of, topped out at 720, so now it's going down, 721, 720, 717. So we topped out what, almost 730 nits? So that's not a far departure from what we measured in filmmaker mode using dynamic tone mapping, it was right around 720 to 730 in a 10% window. And once again here, we peaked out around 730. So now the, the nits are dropping off the longer you leave the window up on the screen. Maybe that's what the reviewers are talking about. It's not necessarily the first 10 to 15 seconds of the reading, it's the next 20, 25, 30 seconds that the brightness really drops down. Yeah, because we're down to 669. It's losing its brightness. So now I know what they were saying. All right, so then we head on to a 25% window. I expect this to peak out around 350. 400, 397, 394, so a little higher. 399, so right around 395 to 400 nits in the 25% window. And usually, as you may know, or may, maybe you don't know, but the larger the window gets on an OLED screen, because of automatic brightness limiter, it usually gets dimmer. And the automatic brightness limiter acts to 
dim down full field white images to protect the panel. And of course, if you have a full field white image at 740 nits, then the panel could overheat. And of course with OLEDs, heat is directly proportional to the lifespan of the TV. The more heat you generate in an OLED, the lower the lifespan is. Hence ABL. So 50% window, we're rocking 227 or so nits. 75% window, we are rocking 183 or so nits. And once you fully engage ABL at a 100% full field white image, you're probably gonna be what, 120, 130 nits? Let's see. 126 nits or so. So that is full field white. So automatic brightness limiter is generally not noticeable during regular content, regular movie consumption, watching Netflix Prime, streaming content, playing Blu-rays, playing games, it's generally not noticeable for most. However, some people are more sensitive than others, absolutely, and for them, ABL can be an issue. It can be an issue to the point where they've returned the TV. So just be aware that the LG C2 is no different than the LG C1 or any of the OLEDs before it or any of the Sony OLEDs for that matter. OLEDs have aggressive ABL no matter what brand, no matter what size they are, no matter what generation they are. And the same holds true for the LG C2. So that's gonna conclude this quick video. I just wanted to give you guys the brightness uh, readings in game optimizer mode because I know that's important to many of you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will see you guys later. I'm out.